Welcome to this Stanford Fire Department training video on water supply in non-hydrant areas. This video is an overview of the operation. There will be future videos coming designed for the individual tasks involved with these operations. All members and departments should review the four SOGs regarding non-hydrant areas. This video will assume that the first and second do engines are already in the driveway attacking the fire with their tank water and the Siamese has been left at the end of the driveway or intersection. This video will portray the third do dump site engines responsibilities and operations along with the arriving tankers and their essential equipment for the operation. This engine's officer or a chief officer will be known as the water supply officer and is in charge of the setup and managing of tankers in and out of the dump site. All other incoming apparatus must stay clear of this area. Let's begin. Upon the third due dump site engine's arrival, position the apparatus away from the Siamese to leave room for incoming tankers to hook up. Depending on the terrain, approximately 50 to 100 feet should be sufficient. This engine's first responsibility is to hook up to one side of the Siamese to supplement water for the fire attack engines already in operation. If room allows, a 5 inch feeder off the large diameter discharge to the Siamese will certainly deliver the most water. However, it is important to keep in mind that we do not want any hose lines in traffic lanes that will need to be utilized by tankers, other fire or civilian vehicles. Therefore, most times a 3 inch line off the rear discharge will keep the operation in an inline, organized fashion. If minor apparatus adjustments are needed, take time to safely make those adjustments rather than pull off excess hose, which can clog a fire scene. Our field tests have shown 3-inch hose delivering over 800 gallons per minute of water to the fire scene. Enough options for incident commanders to have with the firefighting effort. Once connected and confirmed by the second due engine they are ready for water, the pump operator can deliver tank water to supplement the fire scene. Depending upon which apparatus you are, this could be an additional 750 to 1,000 gallons of water towards the firefighting effort. From here on, the driver operator must keep fire attack apparatus informed of water levels and or developing situations. Once this is complete, take time to clearly mark out the dump site. Cone placement will provide safety and assist in a good traffic flow for incoming tankers, other apparatus, or civilian traffic. When the first tanker arrives to the Siamese, its primary responsibility is to nurse the fire scene. Turn of River's new tanker is equipped with new quick deploying three and a half inch supply hose. In under a minute, the fire scene can be supplemented by an additional 3,000 gallons of water. With two hand lines in place, this amount of water can supply the scene for up to eight minutes of continuous operation. This cushion of water now provides the time needed to set up a water shuttle operation if the fire scene escalates and demands the need for a continuous flow of water. To begin the setup for a water shuttle operation, the first portable tank can now be removed from the on-scene tanker. Stanford's tankers carry new custom lane size portable tanks which have been designed for use on many of our narrow roadways. Larger size tanks out there can easily shut down a tanker shuttle operation if apparatus does not have a clear path through the dump site. The lane tanks keeps the flow of tanker traffic moving through the fire scene. These 9x15 tanks will hold 2,500 gallons of water.
Most times, setting up the portable tanks in front of the apparatus will be the most efficient layout for the operation. It isn't, however, the only way it can be set up. So long as a lane of traffic is not impeded upon and the tankers can have a clear path to dump without the need to back up, other layouts are possible. Stanford's tankers will also supply the necessary equipment for the dump site. This dump site setup kit will include a high flow, low level strainer, a 90 degree suction elbow with Stortz adapter, a Siamese in case one wasn't left with the 5 inch by a second due engine, and other essential equipment for the operation. Also considered part of the kit should be the tanker's hard suction. These 13 foot hard suctions are located at the rear of the tankers and are accessible at ground level. This prevents any personnel from needing to climb on top of our apparatus, preventing potential fall injuries. Once this equipment has arrived, we can begin setup. A through the drain method for drafting out of portable tanks has provided positive results on many issues. This is of course not the only way to draft from these portable tanks, however it's now our recommended way. Other setups can trap air in the hard suction or even the plumbing within the apparatus. This setup process will be reviewed in more detail in an upcoming video. A few quick wraps around the hard suction is all it takes. As with any drafting scenario, be sure all fittings are tight and drains are closed. This through the drain method allows the low level strainer to remain flat on the bottom of the tank to collect the most water. The hard suction remains flat on the ground and not impeding the roadway. There is also minimal lift into the pump. The end result will look like this. A clean, tight to the machine setup, also leaving unobstructed access to the cab for the driver operator. We are now ready for additional tankers to enter the scene for an offload of water. All tankers need to be guided in and out of the dump site. Tankers can dump water at 1,000 gallons per minute. Offloading a tanker operates by a 90% rule. Basically, once the water level begins to slow down from the tanker's dump valve, wave it through and send it off to the fill site to return with another full load. It is counterproductive to the tanker's pace and delivery rate along the shuttle route to have it wait and drop every gallon of water, especially if other tankers are lined up waiting. Some tankers may need assistance with dumping water, so it's important we are all familiar with how they operate. As soon as water has cleared over the low level strainer, the pump operator can begin his drafting process to get additional water to the scene quickly as the first nurse tanker is likely getting low. The pump operator should also take this opportunity to refill the engine's booster tank in case there are interruptions in the water supply chain from here on out. There will now be an additional 2,500 gallons plus a reserve booster tank of water on scene available for firefighting operations. When offloaded, a tanker should promptly depart to the fill site. Once we've accomplished these steps, and if the incident still demands a continuous flow of water, we should move on to set up an additional second and or possibly third portable tank. Tanker 68 carries a second tank which can be set up in front of the first. Tanker 78 from Long Ridge 
also carries one of these same size lane tanks. It is best to get the tanks less than a foot apart. With multiple tanks, we will now need to set up a water transferring device from tank to tank. Holly tubes are designed for just that and outperform the older jet siphon with hard suction methods. Holly tubes move greater volumes of water faster, are easier to set in place, and do not leave hundreds of gallons of water unusable in the tank like some jet siphons do. Stanford's tankers carry these devices on their rear bumpers. They are packed with a 50 foot section of two inch hose ready to be connected to a discharge on the pump. Also keep in mind to connect this hose on the same side of the pumper that will not be in a traffic lane. It's also good practice to set this device up on the opposite corner from the strainer. It will keep the turbulent water away from the strainer when the transfer process begins. The Holly tube itself has a built-in low-level jet siphon maximizing the water transferred from the tank. It simply rests on the bottom of the tank and top rail. There is no need to lash it down like with other hard suction methods. We are now ready to have additional tankers enter the dump site. The first portable tank is always the priority to fill or top off. The tanker can then move on to the next tank with its remaining water. At no time should fire personnel be between tanks or tankers. Once the portable tank has water in it, the pump operator can begin a transfer process if needed. The operation of a holly tube is just like a hand line. Open the discharge and set the pressure. A 75 psi discharge pressure is a good start and will move approximately 1,000 gallons of water per minute to the next tank. Again, priority is to always keep that first tank full. If you need to move more water quickly, simply increase your pressure. Keep in mind, it takes water to move water. During your moments of transferring water from one tank to another, since we are at draft, we will steal some of that water going to the fire scene to operate the holly tube. With these two tanks in operation, we will now have up to 5,000 gallons of water available for fire attack crews. If further expansion is needed, for a third tank, the same steps apply. With the proper level tanker response, our drills have successfully managed up to three portable tanks of 7,500 gallons of water with uninterrupted flows to a fire scene. At our most recent drill, we flowed without interruption 57,295 gallons of water over 94 minutes with the tanker shuttle as the heart of the operation. This averaged 610 gallons per minute to a fire scene, with max flows at almost 800 gallons per minute at times. We've even been able to achieve a max flow of 1,500 gallons per minute with an elevated platform operating a 2-inch tip at 1,000 gallons per minute simultaneously with a blitz fire in operation of 500 gallons per minute. Remember, this inline setup leaving unobstructed road lanes and prompt activation of at least a level one tanker response are key to a successful tanker shuttle operation. 
We hope this video has been beneficial towards the understanding of water supply in non-hydrant areas of Stamford. There will be more videos to follow. In our line of work, there are other ways to accomplish this task. Knowing and understanding those different ways will make you a better firefighter. However, this methodology is to have us all familiar and training towards the same way, which will make us a more cohesive department. Please note, this drill was conducted in a controlled environment closed to traffic. All policies for operating in roadways with safety vests should be followed. Additional agencies such as PD or CERT should be requested for assistance with traffic.